Hey, what's up everybody? In this video, we're gonna cover why you should completely ignore your refund. It's not the important number that you should pay attention to on your tax return. Now, I have another video, uh, I'll put a link right here that goes into more depth uh, as it relates to this topic. But here, I just wanted to give a quick example that will hopefully help you understand why you should completely ignore the refund and pay attention to the actual amount of tax that you owe. So here's the example. Let's say that you go to a restaurant and you give the waiter a hundred bucks and then you proceed to order your meal and your meal cost eighty dollars all right so you've given them a hundred here i'll put up this right here you know you've given them a hundred dollars uh you bought food that cost eighty at the end of the day they're going to hand you twenty dollars back all right so eighty is inclusive of tip and everything right? So they're going to give you $20 back. You got a refund. You got change back of $20. All right. So let's look at what your friend does. All right. Your friend goes to the same restaurant. The friend gives the waiter $120 and proceeds to order the exact same meal you do that cost $80. They will get change back or a refund of $40. Okay. And so your refund was 20. Your friend's was 40. What people nine times out of 10 do when it comes to their tax return is the friend who got the $40 back would look at the friend who got 20 back and say, I've got a better CPA or tax preparer than you do because I got $40 back. But it's so blatantly obvious in this particular example that you both ordered the exact same amount of food. You both paid $80 for the meal. Your friend only got back more money because he gave the waiter more money. So it's money he had to begin with. And why would you give the waiter 120 and let them hold on to the extra $20 when you could have just given them 100 and kept that 20 yourself? All right, so let's take this a little bit further and look at this. Let's say that you have a tax preparer or CPA or you know a meal advisor, a food advisor who helps you get that food down to $60, okay? So, okay, hey, look, Maybe here's a coupon that I know about that, you know, you can get $10 off of your meal when you eat at that restaurant. And hey, maybe you don't actually need that appetizer, but you could get this one or your kids could share a plate. So all said and done, we get your meal from $80 down to $60, okay? Now you've actually spent less money on the meal than your friend, right? But the second step of that is, your advisor, your food advisor tells you, hey, look, when you go to the restaurant, don't give the waiter a $100 bill because your meal is not going to be anywhere near $100. We, we think it's going to be somewhere around 60. Why don't you just give the waiter $65? Okay, so now we've got your meal down to 60. We've given the waiter 65 up front. Your friend comes in, still gives them the 120 up front, still orders the $80 meal. Your friend's going to get a $40 refund or change back, you're only going to get five. So this is actually even bigger spread than the first time around. But look at the actual example here. Who's better off? Is your friend better off because they got change back of $40 and you only got five? Or are you better off? You're obviously better off. This example shows it blatantly obvious that you only spent $60 on the food. Your friend spent $80 on the food. So you have more money in your pocket at the end of the day. So let me pop this last example up. Uh, here is what it is. Okay, the money that you gave the waiter going into the restaurant is how much was withheld, your federal tax withholding or estimated tax payments if you happen to be self-employed. The uh, value of the meal, the 60 or the $80, is the amount of income tax you actually owe. Uh, and then the change that you got back is your refund. So in this example, you can see, you don't wanna pay attention to the refund or the amount of change that you got back. You wanna pay attention to the actual value of the meal that you purchased. You spent less money on the food, or in this example, you paid less in tax at the end of the day. So that amount of tax is what you wanna pay attention to. You wanna stop paying attention to your refund. Uh, you know, honestly, from a purely financial standpoint, you want your refund to be as small as possible because exactly like in this example, when your friend goes and gives the waiter 120 and you only give the waiter 100, the waiter has that $20 until they give it back to you. Now for a meal, you know, whatever, you get it back that day. But for the IRS, for the government, 
You give it to them throughout the year and you don't get it back until a year later. You could have been using that money for an entire year, but instead you just overpaid your taxes, let the government borrow that money interest free, by the way, while, while they held on to it until they gave it back to you. So you actually want your refund from a financial standpoint. Now I get, you know, people like the feeling of a big refund. It's kind of a quote unquote forced savings plan and they, they don't budget for it. So then they get the refund and they go take a vacation or use it for clothes or whatever, right? Like I, I get that aspect of it. So I always say that the amount of refund you get back is really a personal choice or personal preference. But from a pure mathematical financial standpoint, you would actually want your refund to be as small as possible. In fact, you'd actually want to owe the government. So in this particular example, instead of walking in and giving $65 to the waiter, you'd want to give the waiter $55. And then when he comes back and says your meal was 60, you say, oh, okay, here's the extra $5 and you walk out. So from that mathematical financial standpoint, if you owe the government money uh, at tax time, but it's small enough amount that you don't owe any penalties and interest. You know, you, you did what you needed to to avoid penalties and interest, but you owe a little bit of tax, maybe five hundred, maybe a thousand dollars at the end of the day, uh, instead of getting a refund. Then you've actually borrowed that five hundred or a thousand dollars from the government for a year, interest free. So there you have it. Real quick video on why you should ignore your refund again. You can look at that other one if you want. I go in a little bit more detail. I also give this same example kind of at the beginning of that video. Uh, but check that out if you want a little bit more detail as I walk through an actual tax return and show you where these numbers are and kind of which ones you want to pay attention to. My name is Brad. I'm with Wooten CPA. My goal is to bring peace to your finance and tax responsibilities. One of the ways I do that is through these YouTube videos. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Please hit the bell so that you're notified when new videos come out. Thank you for watching.